Okay, I don't have a gavel today. Awesome. Uh, good afternoon. <laughs> it's uh, one thirty. We're having a little microphone issue that none of the commissioners are smart enough to figure out how to turn it off, turn it on. Um, it is one thirty. time on our schedule for uh, two planning hearings today. Um, we're going to hear first uh, ZC0037-21. That's the Poyer Living Trust. And the second file is S0004-21, which is the Monarch Vista subdivision. Oh, okay. I'm not going to read that. Um, before we start, is there anybody with hearing or visual um, issues that need the impairments, I should say, that need assistance? And if you have a hearing impairment, again, you would be able to tell it. I asked you if you had a hearing impairment. Yes, ma'am. I've got a vision impairment, and I don't know that it is. A vision? So I'll wait and see. Uh, um, so if you sit, maybe you should sit up front then. Can you see that screen okay? Yeah, I'm so far, but anything smaller, I'll be lost. Okay, yeah, pretty much everything should be right up there. Okay. Other than us yakking, the commissioner's yakking towards the end, so. Okay. I don't see your first <laughs> you would think you never know. You know it's day to day anymore. Well, that's so, the first one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. With that, I will go ahead and call for conflicts of interest. Uh, Commissioner Conley has no conflict. <laughs> Mr. Bradshaw has no conflict. And Commissioner McDonald, I have no conflict. So with that, um, can you read the, what it says on the board? Yes, I can. Okay, good. Because those are the those are the hearing procedures. So what's going to happen for those who haven't been to one of these before? Um, staff is going to present um, the report. Um, then the applicant, if they're here, or the applicant's representative will also have an opportunity to, uh, to to present anything they feel they need to present, and the commissioners can ask questions at any time. Um, and then once we get through that, we'll go ahead and open it up for public testimony. We always start with those that are in support of the project, anyone who's neutral, which rarely have I ever seen anyone ever be neutral, and then uh, those that would be opposed. Um, which you're going to get three minutes to speak, so I would recommend you keep your comments precise, and I'll, and I'll remind you this when we get to that point. Um, try to be pithy with them and keep them exactly to it, um, to the issue at hand. Um, make sure that uh, uh, if you have someone that's already said something you want to say, you, if you can say, hey, I agree with the person before me or whatever it is. If not, you still have the ability to speak if you wish. Try to keep it on point because if it's wandering off into some other realm that's not related to this file, then, then I'll have to reel you back in. Um, once we get to the end of that, um, we will have an opportunity for the applicant and for the staff to rebut if there's a need to, and then we will close public comment and the commissioners will deliberate and you'll get to hear how we do it. It's not really that exciting, but it'll be fun to watch. Um, and then we'll go ahead and make a decision during the meeting. Um, please make sure that you're respectful to all those speakers, whether it's staff, the applicant, or one of the individuals that might be speaking for or against it, make sure you're respectful of them and be quiet so they can get their work, get their piece, get their uh, what they want to say out. Um, and with that, I will go ahead and turn it over to staff. Oh, I've got a gavel too, so get out of hand. I'll have to hit this, apparently. Okay, so with that, I will turn it over to staff to start the report. Ladies and gentlemen, commissioners, good afternoon. Daniel Britt, planning staff for the record. We're here this afternoon to discuss the zone change from R10 to R5. These are evaluations of amendments on our county revised code 12-11. Um, to summarize that, it already says that the zoning code is in alignment with our comp plan. 216 um, allows staff to find that there's adequate evidence in the application to move forward with this hearing. And 1230, um, is the purpose statements for each zoning district. So we'll learn a little bit about that here in a few minutes. 
So the proposed project, <clears throat> the applicant has proposed a zone change from rule 10 to rule five for the purpose of dividing the property into five acre parcels for the creation of single family lots. The proposed zone change will remain within the current comprehensive plan designation of rural residential for five to 10 acres. <clears throat> the rural district has two designations, an R10 and an R5, which this uh, request was reviewed against. A little background on the parcel here highlighting yellow. It is a vacant parcel of 40 acres. It is unplanted. Um, it is in the rural town district and the comp plan designation is rural residential. Parcel is accessed from Highway 41, which is a paid travel way that the state owns and Hunter Road, which is a Bonner County owned but privately maintained road. These are the environmental features and the services available to the property. We can see on this map here, um, all the orange and yellow there on the top of your screen indicates slope. So we can see that there's nine slopes on this parcel. There's no map wetlands. Um, it does not contain any waterfront or streams. Um, services that can be provided are an individual well, individual septic, fire protection is provided by Spirit Lake Fire District, um, power by Inland Power, and within School District 83. <clears throat> uh, this parcel, there's two different soil types found on this 40 acres. Uh, the small sliver here, that's orange on the left-hand side, is prime land if irrigated. And then the section that's green right through here is considered prime farmland. These are the agencies that were reviewed or <clears throat> that were routed for comments. Um, we received comment from Spur Lake Fire District, and our health district, Idaho Fish and Game. Those letters are included um, in the staff report for their recommendations from those departments. Public comment, two were received. One was neutral, but expressed concerns about the maintenance of Hunter Road, and the other letter was in support of the zone change. This is a map of the area, as well as the parcel. You can see here on the left-hand side, this is the parcel in question. It says rural residential, five to 10 acres, and the other designations surrounding um, this parcel. This is the current zoning. This dark blue indicates the R10. This indicates R5, rural service center, and suburban zoning is listed in, on the side here. So this is the purpose statement for the rural district. Um, it's established low density residential uses that are compatible with rural pursuits. Um, it allows limited residential density, allowing small scale farming and forestry activities, and encourages conservation development that creates open space for farming areas. These are the standards of review um, for the R10 and the R5. Um, we look at the parcel in its current state and review it to see if it has um, characteristics that are, or if the property is characterized by slopes steeper than 30%. This one is not. And located in critical wildlife habitat, it's not for fish and game. Um, it does contain prime ag soils. It is served by um, public roads and private roads that do meet the standard. So in this, in this standard here for the R10, if the property doesn't meet the standard, it doesn't work. In this case, it does. It's not within the floodplain, um, and it does not lim have limited access to public services. Um, currently, for the R5 designation to meet those criteria, um, it can be developed at or near one dwelling unit per five acre density and or do not meet the criteria for the R10. This one meets that criteria um, and does not meet the criteria for the R10. These are the final facts found in the staff report. These are not changed. The conclusions of law are the same as found in the staff report. Staff so found the proposal is consistent with Bonner Revised County Code and Planning and Zoning Commission Voted unanimously for approval of this project. That concludes my presentations, commissioners. If you have any questions. 
Okay, gentlemen, do you have any questions for staff? Not at this no. time. Okay, thank you, staff. I guess I could use your real name, but we'll just call you staff. Sorry. Is the uh, is the applicant or the applicant's representative here, and do you wish to speak? Make sure you identify your name for the record. Thank you, sir. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Steve Circle. I'm with Tri-State Consulting Engineers. Uh, I'm the applicant representing Four Year Living Trust. Uh, as we were here at PNZ, uh, I'll say the same. Pretty much same thing. We've read through the staff report, and we certainly uh, uh, support the direction and recommendation from the planning and zoning. And um, my client just wishes to be more like the surrounding areas around there. Uh, I, the Poirier family has owned quite a bit of this land for several decades, I understand. And so uh, I guess I'd answer any questions you have. I think pretty much everything's straightforward for you. Okay. Do you have any questions for you? Um, just uh, maybe you could take a moment to address the concerns about the road and that um, would be the privately maintained road that um, came in. I'm glad, I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, I've spoken with Brian about that. And at this point in time, we're looking at just changing the color of the map. We don't we don't have a formal subdivision application prepared. And I've spoken with uh, your staff, uh, both with Daniel and, and uh, Milton, about what what is going to be the position there. Because as obviously you guys have known, there's some of the several developments that have happened to the north as well as to the west. And we do, we're kind of hands are open or eyes are open and what what might come about as far as improving that road. Um, if he comes forward with an application for development, you know, we could do it in a, in a minor land division if we wanted to, but I think that's how most of them have done it up there. But certainly we'd like to see some improvement. We, we, we've read the comments from the fire department and certainly there's something that needs to be done, but I don't necessarily want to, I mean, it's going to be pretty financially burdensome for my client to burden all that cost all the way down to 41. So. Yeah, well, ideally, but one of the best things we've we've ever recommended is typically a shared road agreement. It would require you to contact all the all the users and everyone, you know, come up with a formal agreement, contractual agreement. But that's that's down the road. Yeah, that's down the yeah. road. Yeah, as my client has shared, the main primary guy that does maintain that road lives at the very top. No oh. kind of, the name slipped in my mind of who it is, but uh, yeah, we saw him not too long ago. Okay, yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So with that, um, you guys don't have any questions for anybody, huh? Okay. So we'll go ahead and open up public comment again. You get three minutes. Make sure when you, and I'm going to have you come to the microphone uh, at the podium, make sure you say your name for the record, uh, if you would. Um, no derogatory comments, derogatory comments to anybody, you know, be professional. Um, just state your concern. Try to keep it on point if you can. Um, so anyone in favor of the, wish to speak in favor of this uh, file? I see none. How about neutral? Anyone here that's neutral? <clears throat> okay, now how about opposed? Is there anyone here that is opposed to this? Wow. Okay. Well, just for the heck of it, I'll be opposed. No, I'm just kidding. Um, okay, so with regard to get a word, there's, since there's been no opposition, there is no need for rebuttal. So we'll go ahead and skip rebuttal and go right to deliberation. Um, I don't see a problem with this. It fits within the comp plan. The comp plan says 510, the ground is right. Um, it doesn't have the slope, doesn't have the inherent difficulties that might come with rural residential uh, in this area. Um, I'll be interested to see what happens when they get to the point where they're actually going to develop the plan and um, they do the, the road agreement. There's gonna be a road agreement, but uh, I think the findings of fact are conclusive. It's got good access um, other than the condition of the road potentially. Um, so I see no problem with the moving this from 10 to five. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think that this actually fits the five. Um, better. Uh, obviously the designation of five better than it does the 10. Mm -hmm. um, the couple things that were brought up, I think will be addressed. I know will be addressed during um, the division of this land. It will be the road. So I'm, I'm fine with it. You think so? Yeah, the other, uh, from what I can tell, those are fives right off the top side of it there. And it's a good place for it. So it does does fit. Okay, well, in light of the comments uh, and deliberation, I will go ahead and uh, accept a motion for approval on this uh, file. 
Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the project file ZC0037-21, requesting a zone change from Rural 10 to Rural 5, finding that it is in accord with the general and specific objectives of the Bonner County Comprehensive Plan and Bonner County Revised Code is enumerated in the following conclusions of law. And based upon the evidence submitted up to the time of the staff report was prepared and this testimony received at this hearing. I further move to adopt the findings of the facts and conclusions of law as set forth in the staff report and direct planning staff to draft written findings and conclusions to reflect this motion. Have the chairman sign and transmit to all interested parties. This action does not result in the taking of private property. I would second that. Okay, we have a motion to second. Roll call vote. Aye. 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 The motion passes. And now we'll do the uh, zone change motion. I move to approve an ordinance of Bonner County, Idaho, the number to be assigned, citing its authority and providing for the amendment of official zoning map of Bonner County by the reclassification of lands located in section one, township 55 north, range four west, Boise Meridian, Bonner County, Idaho, from rural five acre to recreation. Is that right? No. No. Oh. No. How did that get in there? From rural to rural ten to rural. Yeah, from rural ten to rural five. And providing for an effective data. Further move to authorize the chair to sign the official supplementary zoning map upon publication of the ordinance. And I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion to second and good catch by Commissioner Bradshaw. Yeah. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion aye. passes. Oh, sorry. Roll call. My bad. Commissioner McDonald. Aye. Commissioner Connolly. Aye. Commissioner Bradshaw. Aye. Thank you, Claire. Mm -hmm. You guys have met Claire. This is Claire. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that concludes that file. Uh, we'll go ahead and move on to S zero 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 four dash two one. And staff and begin when whenever she's ready. Good evening, commissioners and members of the public. We are here for the public hearing of uh, file Monarch Vista Point subdivision. It is a request to plot eighteen residential lots and two utility lots on a property that is generally located in section 21, Township 56 North Range 1 West of Boise Meridian. It is accessed of Midas Drive and West Garfield Bay Road, both Bonner County owned public right of ways. The applicant is requesting to subdivide the parcel uh, into 20 lots, 18 residential and two utility lots. Here is the preliminary plan that was submitted for review. It is 14.75 acres uh, of vacant and unplatted land. It has direct access and frontage on West Garfield Bay Road and Midas Drive. The current zoning is recreation and the land use designation is resort community. Site does contain slopes of over 30% grade. It does not contain any wetlands. It does not front or contain any water bodies. It contains three types of soils, all of which are classified as non-prime farmland soils. It is located in special flood hazard uh, area zone B, and it would not require any further floodplain review. Idaho Department of Fish and Game identified Lake Pondre and its major tributaries as a critical uh, habitat for bull trout that may require special management and protection. The agency also identifies the lake and the surrounding areas as a habitat for other wildlife. The development received a verse of letter from Garfield Bay Water and Sewer District for intent to provide sewer services. Uh, a proof of water availability was also provided by Harmony Warren, uh, an Idaho state registered professional geologist. Uh, the development will also receive or also or already has access to services such as Northern Lights, Selkirk Fire District, Lake Pondre School District 84, Bonner County Ambulance District, and uh, Pondre Hospital District. These were the standards against which this file was reviewed. This is a detailed description of that review, which was included in the staff report. So I will not go over these uh, points one by one, but they are available for your review. So 
several public agencies were notified of this request on November 30, 2021. We received a comment from Bonner County Road and Bridge with comments pertaining to uh, addition of notes on the plat, requirement of encroachment permits, clarification on the lots accessing Midas Drive and those accessing West Garfield Bay Road, Improvements to Midas Drive, request to dedicate five feet along road frontage uh, of West Garfield Bay Road. Panhandle Health District commented uh, regarding uh, recommending the applicant to contact the, uh, contact the agency early in the planning process so as to determine the project feasibility. The agency further listed conditions for the applicant for plat approval. Idaho Department of Water Resources takes no position on the proposal. Uh, they say that no approval is required if well is to be used only for household, including up to one half an acre of irrigation of no more than 13,000 gallons per day. Approval is required if wells are to be used to irrigate more than half acre of land and use will exceed 13,000 gallons per day or be shared by more than one, one household. Idaho Department of Environmental Quality does not review projects on a case-by-case -case basis. Idaho Department of Fish and Game uh, made several suggestions to be implemented and conditions and recommended conditions to be included in the project CCNRs to uh, reduce any impacts to wildlife. Grading, they say that grading erosion control plan and sewer hookups that are anticipated would require would eliminate any possible negative impacts to water quality. Northern Lights also provided a well served letter to the development and uh, listed several conditions consistent with consistent um, with their policies. The Arcade Bay Sewer District um, went on to submit an unsigned copy of an agreement for construction of sewer main extension to the subject site for the proposed development. And no other agencies replied. Several public comments were submitted um, and these concerns were raised. Postponement of, of the scheduled hearing for the Planning and Zoning Commission, traffic and road maintenance, inadequate access through West Garfield Bay Road and Midas Drive, safety concerns due to existing road width and unimproved design for the increased amount of traffic proposed by the development, inadequate Garfield Bay sewer infrastructure, water and well, wells and water runoff, proposed density of homes, water availability, fire suppression, critical wildlife disruption, negative impacts on existing infrastructure and altered rural character. Staff recommends approval of the project uh, subject to conditions, which we will go over in the next few slides. Staff did conclude that the project is consistent with Bonner County Revised Code, based upon the standards review, findings of facts, conditions of approval, and conclusions of law. So we'll go over the findings of fact for this project now. The subject site exists as an unplatted parcel of land containing 4.75 acres of area. It is zoned recreation and has a land use designation of resort community, uh, which allows creation of parcels that are 12,000 uh, square feet in size or more, provided they have both urban water and urban sewer services. The proposed plot requests creation of 18 residential lots and two utility lots. The intended purpose of the 18 residential lots is to develop them in single family uh, residential structures, and that has been included as a note on the plat. The proposed use of single family residential development is permitted by right in recreation zoning district. Garfield Bay Sewer and Water District provided a well served letter with the intent and the will to provide sewer service to the proposed 18 residential lots in the subdivision. A water availability report was submitted, prepared by a licensed professional. Um, the 18 lots will be served by two wells shared between 18, 18 lots. So each, well, each uh, well would be serving nine residential lots. 
The site has or will have access to seven other services such as Northern Lights, Selco Fire District, Lake Pondre School District, Bonner County Ambulance District, and Pondre uh, Hospital District. The site does contain slopes of um, grade more than 30%, and the proposed lots are smaller than five acres. So a grading and erosion control plan prepared by the engineers was submitted as part of this application. It has been routed to the county engineer for their review, and the applicant would be required to update the plan if any changes are requested by the engineer. The project proposes 18 residential lots with a development density of approximately 1.22 dwelling units per acre of land. All proposed lots are less than 300 feet wide and maintain a depth to width ratio of not more than 2.5 is to 1. All proposed lots have direct access to West Garfield Way Road and Midas Drive. Both of these are uh, public right of ways. Uh, Midas Drive is county owned but privately maintained. The proposed preliminary plat has been evaluated as per the applicable Bonnet County Revised Code standards and it meets those standards. Conclusions of law. The, pro the proposed subdivision is in accord with the purposes of this title and the zoning district in which it, will, it is located. It is physically suitable for the proposed development. The design of the proposed subdivision will not adversely impact Bonner County's natural resources as identified in the comprehensive plan. The, uh, the public and private services, including but not limited to water, sewer services, solid waste, fire protection, emergency services, and school facilities and transportation, which will serve the proposed subdivision are adequate for the needs of the future residents uh, or users. And wherever um, those, those services have not been put in at the moment, they have been included as conditions of approval for this project. The proposed subdivision will not cause circumstances to exist that will cause future residents or the public at large to be exposed to hazards to health and safety. The design of the proposed subdivision or related improvements will provide for coordinated access with the county system of roads and with adjacent properties and will not impede the use of public easements for access to or through the proposed subdivision. The proposed transportation system is designed to adequately and safely serve the future residents or users without adversely impacting the existing transportation system by reducing the quality or level of service or creating hazards or congestion. The proposed subdivision is designed to comply with the design criteria set forth for subdivisions in subchapter 6.2 of Title 12. The proposed subdivision is in accord with the Bonner County Comprehensive Plan. These are some conditions of approval uh, if the board were to decide to approve this project. A final plan shall be recorded as per BCRC 612-643-I. The preliminary plan is valid for a period of uh, for a period not to exceeding two years of two calendar years from the date of approval. And the applicant may request extension as per this part of the code. A digital copy of the final plat shall be submitted. The sanitary restriction shall be denoted on the plat. A fire suppression plan was submitted as part of this application. And additionally, any uh, one of these conditions that are listed on the screen here may be put on the plat or may be satisfied for fire protection and mitigation. The application was routed to Bonner County Road and Bridge Department. The agency has made several recommendations or conditions regarding improvements to Midas Drive of West or West Garfield Bay Road. The applicant shall be required to meet these conditions as stated in the agency's comments or per or per uh, any subsequent modifications made to these conditions by the agency. This is a new condition that has been added to conditions of approval, condition number seven. Since law 11 does not have direct access to the electrical services, a utility easement shall be granted to the lot through lot 10 or lot 12 
from Midas Drive or as per any subsequent modifications made to this condition by Northern Lights. The plat shall comply with all the conditions as listed in BCRC 12-464, which pertain, which pertain to approval of the final plat. After the preliminary plat is approved, the applicant will be required to submit an improvements plan for the subdivision prepared by a registered civil engineer as per BCRC 12-644. Two copies of the improvement plan shall be filed with the county engineer and it will show all the services that have been put in place or will be put in place. Uh, instead of submitting an improvement plan, the applicant has an option of ending a surety agreement with the board, uh, agreeing to complete the improvements in accordance with the conditions of the preliminary and the final plan approvals. The site does contain slopes of over 30% grade. At the moment, the applicant is not proposing any ground disturbing activities in the area that is uh, that has that steep slope. However, if any land disturbing activities were to be proposed in those areas, the applicant would be required to submit a geotechnical analysis before starting that development. Uh, the analysis will have to be stamped and signed by Idaho licensed civil uh, or geological engineer, having sufficient education and experience to prove competency in the field of gen geotechnical engineering. Prior to any ground disturbing activities, the applicant shall install all temporary erosion control measures as designed and approved. Uh, the applicant shall provide to the planning department a signed statement from the project engineer or design professional stating that these measures have been installed as per the design specifications approved by the county engineer. After the approval of the preliminary plat, a final plat shall be prepared in conformance with the requirements of the final plat as per these sections of the code listed on the screen here and submitted to the planning department for review. The applicant shall also submit a copy of the current preliminary title report along with the final plat. With that, staff recommends approval uh, of the project subject to conditions of approval and the Planning and Zoning Commission recommended approval with a vote of two is to one. And I just wanted to uh, make a clarification. Uh, there was a typo in the staff report regarding the decision date of the decision that the Planning and Zoning Commission recommended approval. It has been listed as February 8, 2022. It is actually January 6, 2022. Okay, I'm sorry. You're going to have to go over and start again then. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I can I can take any questions at this time. Okay, I've got one. Um, so under the uh, under the conditions, it says number eleven applicant applicant shall install prior to any ground disturbing the ground activities. And one of the letters, by the way, we read all the letters that get submitted to us when you guys send us in letters. It was talking about they already started building roads. Wouldn't that would were they required to, to deal with any kind of sediment issues there at that time when they built the roads in or? Yes. So, depending on the uh, comments made by the road and road and bridge department, if the applicant were to be required to improve the roads or extend the roads or whatever whatever improvements they are required to make, okay. they would be required to submit a erosion control plan or stormwater management plan, right. and that would be reviewed by the county engineer. Okay. Yeah, because that was one of the one of the letters I thought it said, and maybe I'm maybe I'm getting this confused with the eight hundred other things we have going on, but. But I said they had already started building, doing some road work or building some additional roads. Maybe it's the little access road that goes up around. But they said there was equipment on the site. Yeah, so. equipment on the site. Um, so I've got one question for you. Um, so the water issue, which came up quite frequently in the different letters. So it's, a, you know, um, it would be urban water and sewer. And we see the sewer, but the water is, is two wells defined by... Um, the applicant and I guess my question is is that has to be proven before 
you can move forward, right? Because that's a part of the um, part of the application is to prove that you can have whatever the amount of water is. Is it thirteen thousand gallons per unit or whatever it is? Do we know that? Is is that our? We would have to take that, right? Right. So the so the way our code is written is it requires a water availability report prepared by a professional. And that is what the applicant submitted. As as far as um, as um, when we move when we move past the preliminary plan into the final plan, that is when they would be required to submit an improvements plan, or to show that the wells are being put in. Or I was going to say this is just a subdivision. Right. Um, once they start to actually come up with a plan, then yes. they're going to have to provide the proof. That they yes. The so at the preliminary stage, they are only required to provide a report prepared by a professional to show that there is availability of water. Okay. Um, it was just the first step. Any other questions? That is just the first step, yes. Any other questions by the commissioners? No. no. Thank you, Swati. Um, you have the applicant here, an applicant representative? Yep. Great. Make sure you identify your name for the record. Please. Thanks, Swati. Hi, my name is Colby. Uh, I am one of the partners in the application here um, and can give you guys a quick rundown. Obviously, a lot of you guys were here a month and a half ago when we went through this before. Uh, Commissioner McDonald, to answer your question about the roads, we haven't done any road work. There was logging that was done on the property. There were skidding roads that were already okay. there. And so equipment was out there. We hired that out by uh, Fidget Logging was a company we hired and it was all permitted by Idaho. Forestry Commission, I believe. Yeah, yeah, I was like I said, I was responding yeah. to what I read. Yeah, so equipment was out there, but it was all logging equipment okay. that they brought in to do that work. So we haven't done anything. Uh, part of the application, we have TO Engineering, as mentioned up here, who has run through and gone through all of our stormwater erosion control plan, everything. Um, kind of at the end of the day, this application, um, ultimately our goal is to comply with what Bonner County already has set in place. As Swati went through, they gave the approval and the conditions to that approval. Um, water is a really big issue. At the end of the day, we need water as well. It's a big issue for us. That's why we hired somebody who we believe to be qualified to do the work. Um, Cause it's a huge waste of money for us to go there and drill an $80,000 well and not get water, right? So we're not gonna do that before we have final approval, but that's part of the steps in the processes. So we will hopefully hit water and then we can prove that we have adequate water. 7B engineering is designing our system to be used. So it'll be a shared well system to comply with Panhandle Health. Um, and so that's all in the works and will happen once we get approval, hopefully out of this meeting so we can actually start spending money into those departments there. Um, so water, it's a big issue as well, but our plan, we hired a really high quality uh, professional to help provide to make sure there was adequate water potential in the area. And the next step will be once we drill wells from dealing with that. Um, and I do know we have expressed a desire to partner with Midas Water Corporation, thinking that it would be a huge win for them as well, because we can help fund infrastructure that they need to expand their water, um, the water that they need to give out to their different members. And we would have loved to partner with them, but they did not express interest necessarily to partner back with us. So um, that is on the plot and something that we will definitely get removed because that was an initial conversation we had. Um, so that kind of addresses water. Each house will have water and comply fully with the agency that is in control of mandating that it um, complies with what happens. So as far as water goes, with Rose, we're working close with Matt at Road and Bridges. We've been out on the property with him. We recognize that Road and Bridges wants that road to be uh, widened and um, improved. And we fully plan to work with him. Obviously we need that in order to fully hit our final approval um, for a final recording, I should say. Um, so we are working with him. That is a plan. Uh, it's what you mentioned on the other development, actually. We are planning, our hope is to have a road maintenance agreement. We're talking to the villas, um, which is the development right up the road with them. I believe they have 11 um, sites off there, then another couple that aren't a part of their HOA. We would love to partner with them and do a road maintenance agreement because it's a win for everybody. You spread out the cost in the road that's not getting maintained and paid for by two people right now. would actually spread the cost out between, you know, 20, 30 individuals that are parcels that are accessing through that road. Um, so we are working on that. That's a big deal to us. Um, and we wanna have a very marketable development at the end of the day. So a good road is a benefit for us. Um, but once again, we are gonna work with Road and Bridges to do what they require of us to do out on that road site. 
Um, and then that goes for West Garfield Road as well, because we'll have several parcels that are accessed off of that. Um, our engineer put together our trip and analyst analysis, which road and bridges, they're the ones that go through, and that's how they came up with what our requirements are in order to improve the road um, that's happening. Um, beyond that, uh, trying to think of other pertinent information, obviously we've all talked about this and it's gone through and you guys have read the letters. Uh, we have fire suppression plan built in. Um, we have kind of done everything we can reading through the code and work closely with SWATI. But at the end of the day, the goal is to comply and to work within the code that our county has put together. Um, recreation, we could go to a significantly higher density, but what we're doing is matching everybody around us and what their usable land is. Even the villas, if you look at what their usable land is, which would be on the east side of the road, matches what we're doing, which is between a half acre to one and a half acres. Um, and then there's parcels that are even smaller than us that are around. So we're not trying to maximize density, but trying to utilize what we believe would be the best fit for the land there. Um, and this parcel at the end of the day is designed to be a development. There's a road that gets right down the middle of it and you have small parcels on either side, small being half acre to acre, parcels on either side. It's not farmland, it's not cattle land, it's not really its best use. It's not even for wildlife habitat because you have 200 feet on either side of a road at the end of the day. Um, so yeah, that's where we stand. Our goal is to work with the community. Um, and, uh, and part of that has been everybody that's reached out to us. I've been happy to meet with, grab coffee with, and talk about and see how we can come alongside and partner and make this a win for the community and recognize people's concern. Um, and that's why we're working, the big one being the road, and we're happy to be chatting with the Bills and anybody else that wants to talk with us on how we can help make it a win for everybody. So that's uh, SDG Properties and our development here. Okay. Gentlemen, do you have any questions for them? the client. Thank you. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> so once again, we're going to go to uh, public comment. Um, three minutes. Make sure you keep it 50. No insults, whatever. You. Be nice. Everybody play nice together. Um, it's uh, let's start out with anyone in favor that hasn't already spoken. See none will go to neutral. Anybody neutral? Get out of here. You're neutral? <laughs> really? Hey, a second. Someone mark this day on the calendar. You got it. Well, you yeah. Now, I want to tell you, we've had people claim to be neutral before when they get up there, they, we realize they're not neutral. Then they're so, true colors. So, this will be the test. We have the shepherds hook ready, just in case. My name is John Monks. I'm uh, uh, retired in, in uh, last November from my profession as a hydrogeologist. I've been working as a hydrogeologist in Bonner County for uh, nearly 30 years now. I was uh, originally asked to do the uh, the, the analysis on, on the uh, the water supply, but I since I'm I'm retired, I'm so I'm passing work on to other people, including Harmony Warren, who I work with, have worked with directly, and continue to work with her on other projects that she has stepped in to take over the work that I've been doing in the past. I reviewed uh, her, her water analysis report this morning and, and, uh, and some of the numbers in her table for, for how much water these wells are producing are pretty large, including one of them, which was listed as a 70 gallon a minute well, the Steckman well. The Steckman well is one I'm familiar with because it's the water supply for Garfield Villas subdivision, which is immediately up the up hill above them. It was listed as a 70 gallon a minute well when it was drilled, but it currently is producing on the order of one to two gallons a minute. And that's not uncommon. There's lots of wells which initially produce lots of water, particularly in fractured bedrock. Lots of water for a short amount of time. This well, it was producing 70 gallons a minute, probably for the first 30 minutes. A few hours later, it was down to considerably less, but what went on the well driller's report was 70. And that's what went into the report and is used in her, her table where she calculates what the average water supply is. And as soon as I saw that, I thought, where's my red flag? That's, that's, there's a problem. 70 gallons a minute is not, is not what that well produces. There's another well that's listed that produced 50 gallons a minute. I highly doubt that. 
my my experience has been when I take a well driller's report and how much they say the water is, I move the decimal point one place to the left. If it says 100, probably 10. It says 70, seven. And that's based on having conducted long-term pumping tests on wells that are trying to get approved for public water supply systems. Well drillers report says 30. We go out there and start doing a pumping test on it. And after a few days, we can get three. And that's that's uh, that's been my experience. So I'm concerned that uh, that the uh, that the availability of water has been overestimated. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Sean. It was kind of neutral. We kind of leaned towards it. Not in favor. That's fine. Okay, so now we'll open it up to those that uh, are opposed to this. Uh, and why don't, why don't we just do this by row? And if you don't wish to speak, that's not a problem, but uh, we'll start with Swati over here. We'll start in the very front row, ma'am, in the front row. Do you wish to make any comments? Well, I had a question. Um, go up to the you. In the, no, the, no, the other you, sorry. The young. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Whichever you wants to go. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, please. I mean, yeah, go ahead, please. And make sure you identify yourself uh, for the record. I said the other you. That's classical, Ben. My name's Lou Garner, and I sent a long list of objections, mm -hmm. which I didn't bring with me. But I do. I did want to ask a question about what you said. You said ground disturbance. My one of my big questions is if you take a road, is what I understand will happen from Midas down to Garfield Bay. It's like thirty percent, probably, you know, slant. And I, I would think it'd be a mudslide. So I don't know. I'm not a geologist. That's for sure. But that particular connection looks like a mess to me. So um, I didn't bring my rest of my list, but I've got plenty. But I've been covered. Ready. Okay. Can yeah, we get these several windows? We get the file a week in advance, so we have a chance to go through and and read everything that's been sent in for those that sent something in. Thanks, Lou. Um, now let's go to the front of the other side there. And again, make sure you're going to get tired of hearing me say this, but make sure you identify your name for the record, please. Uh, you need to have it stamped into evidence if you would. This is like a, so this is a quasi, for those that haven't done this before, this is a quasi judicial proceeding. So we're kind of functioning as judges. So anything you bring up needs to be brought into evidence um, officially, and then we can take a look at it. Okay, my name is Susan Beisline, and I'm here to talk about the danger of fire off West Garfield Bay Road. It's a very densely populated area. I am the last house at the end of uh, near the end of the road, just off the road. And it is a populated fully, pretty much, I would say, during the summer, through spring, through fall. So there's a lot of people out there. There's only one way out for vehicles. Unless you live on the waterfront and you have a dock and a boat, you can escape if there is a fire. The upper portion of West Garfield Bay Road has a great number of trees down, felled by windstorms in the past three years. There are also many dead and dying trees still standing. The Forest Service is aware of this danger, but it has not done anything because they do not have the manpower. I was uh, walking one day and I came home, just got to my driveway and I heard a big explosion down below my house actually three big explosions, and then a lot of other things going off that were on fire. Um, this home is about 300, 250 to 300 feet below mine. And uh, their shed caught fire, part of the house caught fire. And they were home, luckily, so they called. And they got the fire boat from Sam Owen to come down, and they came as fast as they could and started applying water. It took 30 minutes before the first fire engine got out there. And then they had to go down to the summer homes, the Forest Service Lease summer homes, very narrow road, very hard to get to this because the roads are narrow and there is a sharp turn to the left. 
So they had to spend more time backing up, going forward, backing up to get to that house. So if that fireboat hadn't come, I think the whole mountain would have burned up. And I think that is a huge problem out there. There's, like I said, there is so much that's down to catch fire. And within five minutes, probably four minutes after hearing those explosions, I saw flames up in the trees down there, two thirds of the way up those trees already. So my concern is fire out there. We have no fire suppression, nothing. So that is why I'm against this having even more people out there, because as it is now, if there's a fire, we're going to have a heck of a time getting out of there. It's going to be just jammed up on that road, on both roads, Midas and West Garfield Bay Road. It's a bad, bad situation. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. By the way, everybody can please put their phone on silence or, or <laughs> shut it off or... Throw it out the door. Mr. Conley will come take it from you. <laughs> I'm not taking your phone. Yeah, no, he's not going to take your phone. Okay, let's um, we'll start the front of this one right here. You, sir. Not the other you, you. <laughs> My name is Gary Meadows. I live on West Garfield Bay Road, just below the project area there. My address is 711. Kind of tagging along behind what Susan just discussed here, I'm just going in the other direction. I went to Selkirk Fire. And my complaint against the project goes this way. In the event of something extraordinary happening, where an evacuation would have to take place, I was curious to ask Selkirk Fire Department, what could you do in response to this? And where would we be at in a situation where if all at once we had a blooming fire occur and think Paradise, California, summertime or Boulder, Colorado, wintertime. So what I came up with here was a letter that I drafted and sent off to Selkirk. Uh, it went through Chief Gilcrease first. Uh, he sent it then on to Mark Sauter, the fire marshal. Um, at the time, on February 1st, when I submitted this, it uh, appeared that there had not been any kind of uh, real plan in this direction for Garfield Bay because there's never been an issue like this where you have to deal with an evacuation. So with all of that, I've had a couple of conversations with Mark Sauter, and um, He's been very instructive in the fact that now there is a plan coming down from above. And he and Chief uh, Gilchrist did discuss answering to some of my questions. And I just want to read off the questions that I had. As of today at noon, I have not received anything as to the answers to these, but I'm assured they are coming. Here are the questions that I posed. Number one, what's the response time for a fire along Midas Road and or West Garfield Bay Road from the time a call comes in? And does that, is that affected by the railroad crossing off of Highway 95? Can the trucks access Midas Road and West Garfield Bay Road winter and summer? Will those trucks turn around, where will those trucks turn around on those two roads, winter versus summer? Can the residents evacuate simultaneously as the fire trucks and heavy equipment are headed into the area along Midas Road and West Garfield Bay Road, winter as well as summer? And is there a plan in the event of people being trapped along these roads with downed trees or power lines? There's also concerns with the other private roads in that area that connect with West Garfield Bay Road. And I listed off just a few of those, such as Eagle Flight Way, Water's Edge, and Outrigger Drive. So in response to that, he said there is a plan that I will see that's coming. But currently, those are the concerns of mine as to where we stand in the event of a major evac evacuation. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Um, the lady right next to him, you wish to okay. speak? Go ahead, just keep just going down the line. Again, don't forget to state your name for the record, if you would, please. Good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Lori Palmer. I live at 824 West Garfield Bay Road, directly adjacent to the proposed subdivision. I thank you for your time today, and my statement does run a little longer than three minutes. Candy is giving me I was gonna say, the yeah, time. That's something else I want to cover. <laughs> if anybody wants to give anybody else their time, we can do so. I just need to make sure you give me your name. My name is Candace Meadows. Candace Meadows, okay. 
and I am giving half of my three minutes to Lori. Okay, so you're going to give her a minute and a half? Yep, and the other half to my husband. Um, okay. Like many of my neighbors here today, I'm opposed to this development as currently proposed. As I have become involved in this process, I have observed that the application approval process does not adequately address the full impact of development to a given area. While zoning specifications are applicable to large generic areas, there seems to be inadequate consideration to the impact of specific areas of development. We understand that development is inevitable, but with the unprecedented growth we are experiencing, it must be done carefully and responsibly. There is concern regarding the application approval process, and I ask that you give serious consideration to those concerns. As each application comes before you, the solicited agency comments only narrowly address the specific impact of that particular proposal. However, the actual impact of any given development affects much more than those narrow specifics. By example, I've recently learned of other developments in Garfield Bay that have already come before you or are in the process. The total impact to Garfield Bay of only these known developments results in an additional 32 homes if approved. Taken singularly, the impact to our area may look insignificant, but taken together, those 32 additional homes will definitely create a major impact on area roads, schools, fire management, and law enforcement. Due to the rapid growth in this county, the totality of impact must be seriously taken into account. The hearing process must also consider the input of residents to carry the same weight as solicited expert opinion. Area residents are the people with intimate historical knowledge of the resources and conditions of their community, and we are the ones left to live with the unintended consequences when decisions are based on inadequate information. Also at these hearings, we are not given the opportunity to discuss concerns in depth. The public is allowed three minutes per individual to speak with no opportunity to rebut assertions made by the applicant. While the applicant has unlimited time, to make their case and discount any concerns we raise. Our major concerns regarding this development are the impact to the existing water supply and area roads. Though this application may appear to meet the general requirements for approval, I believe it does not meet the requirements of Title 12 because uh, contrary to what the planner stated, there is no proven adequacy of water and that potentially negatively impacts the property rights, property values, and health and safety of area residents, and the road system that is not recommended for upgrade, namely West Garfield Bay Road, Garfield Bay Road, and Sega Road, is not suitable to protect the life and property of current and future residents and the public at large. Those roads do not adequately facilitate the increased congestion from development occurring in Garfield Bay, Camp Bay and all the other development occurring in, Gar in uh, the, all the other individual homes being built in the area. Cr and this creates additional risk to health and safety in an area highly subject to wildfire, wildfire due to neglected forest land. Approval of this application also violates the comprehensive plan, which calls for efficient system management and operation that provides for and accommodates responsible growth considers the impact of development on existing transportation routes, gives priority to public safety, and ensures that development does not result in significant negative impact to ground and surface water. Taken together, a reasonable person cannot accept that all the area development will not have a great impact on Garfield Bay Road and Sago Road, neither of which have had any major improvement in the 12 years I've lived here. It is imperative to our county development and your responsibility to the citizens of this county now more than ever to consider all aspects when approving development applications. Can you start wrapping it up? The commissioner's work? webpage states your purpose is to identify and clarify the needs of the people and ensure the county responds to those needs. And it's the first obligation of local, state, and federal government to protect the health, safety, and general welfare of its citizens. So I urge you as our elected representatives to consider the needs of your constituents first and foremost in your deliberations. And we consider Garfield Bay to be one of the treasures of Bonner County and your decisions affecting Garfield Bay 
have a great impact now and for generations to come. Thank you. Right. Thanks, Lori. Okay, gentleman with the hat on. There you go. <clears throat> Do you really want to get the other minute and a half? Yes. Okay. I'll try and wrap this up fast. Okay, your name for the record, sir? Mike Palmer, um, 824 West Garfield Bay Road. Um, I'm here to address the concerns of the roads and emergency services in the area. Uh, my background is retired law enforcement officer at 33 years from a city of over 100,000. Uh, my assignments included anything from homicide investigation to traffic investigations during that time. Having that in mind, uh, we all know that Idaho and Bonner County are going through unprecedented growth right now because of the changing uh, demographics in this country. Um, this growth that's coming in here will unquestionably, without question, uh, have an impact on uh, existing infrastructure, schools, county maintenance, emergency service, and so forth. Um, West Carfield Bay Road, where we live, just uh, is not unique, but it is a one way in, one way out on gravel road, which was originally built as a forest service road and is basically a glorified dirt road, or as the county would best describe it, an existing primitive and or underdeveloped public right of way. Portions of the road are so narrow and steep with drop offs that it creates issues for vehicles to get past each other safely. And because we're a recreational area, uh, pedestrians and bicycles also frequent the area as well. A road width uh, range anywhere from 10 to 15 feet wide, and this is exacerbated in the winter uh, when those uh, that narrows to 8 to 12 feet. It's, a, as you're well aware, a publicly maintained, uh, county-maintained road. Um, since we've lived there in the last 12 years, it's become increasingly busier and uh, deteriorates much faster uh, over the course of the year. Um, and it used to be a lot of part-time residents. Uh, that's changing rapidly as well. We have a lot of full-time residents there now. So uh, those concerns over that road being adequate once upon a time uh, are gonna go out the door at some point in time. Uh, I don't know how you're going to widen those roads or do anything else just because of the area it's in. Uh, you may be able to gravel it or do something like that, but as far as widening and facilitating uh, a lot more traffic in that area, it's just not going to happen. So um, I just know from a standpoint, you know, as a public servant, you have to look at all the considerations and uh, just use some, you know, uh, good sense when you're making these decisions because our area is unique, just like other areas in the county. Uh, we're not against uh, development, but it's got to be responsible development. Uh, that's a highly dense, you know, the area proposes, uh, you know, 18 homes in a small area. And that area is, it, I don't think it can handle it. So thank you for your time. Okay, thanks, Mike. Uh, we'll go to you, ma'am. Good afternoon. My name is Jean Tolbacher. I'm a full-time resident at 827 West Garfield Bay Road, right across from my neighbors, the Palmers. Uh, this development will be nearly across the road from us. We're just, just up the road slightly. Um, I want to recall two of the things that were said um, by the planner. Section 2.1 of the Bonner County Comprehensive Plan requires that impacts to other properties be taken into consideration when land use proposals are evaluated. I also want you to keep in mind that Bonner County Revised Code 12623B requires documentation demonstrating that there is an adequate water supply to meet the demands of the lots in this subdivision. The word demonstrate is important. The rules of statutory construction require that you give every word in a statute meaning. Um, the water availability report by Harmony Long, the hydrologist that the developer is using does not satisfy the code, nor does it satisfy the comprehensive plan. It's nothing more than an educated guess 
based on outdated and incomplete information. The hydrologist that just spoke to you said she severely overestimated the water. If you look at the age of the wells that she drew this information from, nearly half of them are in the 28 to 41 year age range. We have no current information about what any of these wells are pumping gallon per minutes. Plus, when you look at the survey that she did, she has 17 wells. I can name at least seven other wells that are directly adjacent to this in that quarter mile radius that she didn't capture. All it took was a little legwork to find where those are. So we have no information on any of the other wells in the area. A lot of the wells in our immediate area are already suffering from low production. So I think that's something that we need to keep in mind. Harmony Warren even recognized this by saying that we needed to have a test well drilled um, to see if there's enough water and to see the impact on the existing wells. I urge you to vote no on this proposal as it's currently before you. At a bare minimum, as a condition to approval, you should require the drilling of a test well that pumps continuously during the driest part of the summer when water demand is at its greatest. And you should also require them to place monitors on other select wells in the area to see if we are adversely impacted. If you do that, those conditions will meet, meet the um, code and the code for water. But right now they don't. There's no demonstration that there's water. It's a guess. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, gentlemen, next to her, what kind of next to her? And don't forget to state your name for the record. My name is Dan Bjorn. I live at uh, 25 Mid Lake, Garfield Lake, just down the road from the project. I'm not on the hill where they're at. I sent letters all through the gentlemen. Good morning or good afternoon. All right. Cindy and I are very concerned. I'm going to be basically mirroring her previous statement, but you'll hear what I have to say differently. I'm very concerned about the proposed monarch development being railroaded through Bonner County. There are many points that need to be addressed and considered before development moves forward. I'm a retired oil and gas drilling man of 35 years, both domestic and international. So I would like to touch on the water well issue. I have expertise and understanding of drilling through water tables that are on Mountain Aquifers, which is Ross Mountain is, which is charged seasonally by water from snowpack and uh, it is dependent upon the year's <coughs> precipitation. <clears throat> the Warren Geo assessment data is inadequate. The wells hourly rates used to create the data were from initial drill site wells dating back as far as September 1981. The data is not accurate due to the age of the wells. Production very seldom retains the original production high rates. I compliment the gentleman that took the neutral position. He hit spot. At present, our neighbors that live on the West Garfield area off Miners Road have trouble with water tables dropping in the summer months to the point that they have to truck water in. The proposed development is right where the water table area has a seasonal depletion problem. Uh, by the way, I looked at the geology reports and I looked up the, what's turned into the county, and you guys have it's free public. It's on a 45, 6, uh, 30 degree slant aquifer. Basically, it's a glass filling up during the season from the seasonal conditions. So, as the summer comes on, we had a high drought in the year last year, comes a bigger problem. Okay, one assessment that water support residential is not sustainable. The wise and correct way to move forward with the community is to draw supporting wells to determine the number of homes that can supply by testing and monitoring both new and existing wells through the dry summer seasons. We understand that the owner has the right to move forward, but consideration need to be made that will ensure that the existing homes situated below the proposed or Proposed homes will continue to have full supply of water all year round that they presently experience. Constructing homes and later finding out that the water supply is insufficient is reckless and unfair and should be unlawful. The current residents and prospective residents. Further, it's irresponsible. My wife had something to do with writing some of this. Please vote against this proposal in the current state. Thank you. 
Thank you, Dan. Go ahead, ma'am. Good afternoon. My name is Linda Gu. I'm a full-time resident of Barfield Bay. I'm presenting a summary of comments from Bonner County Deputy Kevin Schulte, who is a full-time resident of Garfield Bay and was not able to be here today. I also have his letter to present as an exhibit. The comments are his and do not reflect any policy or standing of the Bonner County Sheriff's Office. The following are his concerns. He has five of them. Number one, how the addition of 18 homes will impact his own well and water rights. He lives directly across from one of the wells used by Midas Corporation and has personally observed a myriad of issues that have dealt uh, with, that he, they've dealt with to keep that well in service. Number two, public health and safety impacts and concerns. The 18 additional homes, along with the other unchecked growth in the area, creates additional need for emergency services, fire, EMS, and law enforcement. The law enforcement is not asked for input and impact analysis. He is concerned that as commissioners, you cannot know the true impact of the issues and needs for emergency services created by growth if you do not ask for input from all. Number three. With unbridled growth and expansion throughout the county, law enforcement levels have remained at a dangerous and unsafe level. At most times, the 1,900 square miles of Bonner County is patrolled by only four to six deputies. It can take deputies 30 minutes to an hour to respond to an emergency due to the limited number on patrol at any given time and the miles separating areas of the county. Number four, both Midas Drive and West Garfield Bay Road are narrow and will become a traffic congestion issue for fire, EMS, and law enforcement to navigate during an emergency. Deputy Schulte states he has personally observed residents and fire responders impacted by the growth in the county and the narrow roadways as one entity flees and the other attempts to gain access to notify residents and attempt to save lives and property. Number five, Monarch Vista Point subdivision as presented would result in a cluster of homes incompatible with the contiguous neighborhoods. Because the subdivision is not adjacent to an activity center, cluster development is not needed and appears out of place given the rural context of the surrounding neighborhoods. To honor the context and history of the tranquil rural setting of Garfield Bay and to apply and understand the safety, public safety concerns, Deputy Schulte urges you to reject the subdivision as proposed. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let's see. Well, that's just a B recorder over there. We never. Thank you. Ma'am, would you wish to speak here in the blue sweater? Okay. Um, gentleman with the hat, right there. Any other rules, please state your name for the record, please. Hi, my name is Zach Richards. I live on Garfield Bay Road. Um, in uh, continuing what Jeannie Tollcatcher said and the gentleman in the back, um, I have a well that's within the hydrologist report that is not on the report. Um, my, when I first moved in the house, my well report says I have 50 gallons per minute. I can stand on my sink and it takes me approximately two minutes to fill a gallon of water. Um, when it comes to the grade, uh, it keeps getting repeated over 30%. The vast majority of these properties are more than 50% grade. There's no way you're building on this without disturbing the ground. Uh, I think this is irresponsible to try to push this as it is, that's all. Nope, you're fine. Okay, um, sir, right here in the plaid. Okay. Must be Pam. Go ahead. And make sure you state your name for the record, please. Um, 
My name is Linda Owen. I live on West Buffalo Bay Road. I'm going to thank the county for hearing us and commissioners for hearing our all of us our concerns. Um, I agree with everyone that's spoken so far. I mean, it's so true. Um, spring of 2019, uh, our well, we shared our well with three, uh, two other people, so there's three of us. Our well was going dry and it's probably just about dead. We had to get a new well, and three of us had to share. They had to drill almost 600 feet for the new well because our new one, and the old one, was not working anymore. It was drying. And we get to a point that it actually dried up. So our new well, uh, they went, like I said, almost 600 feet, and we only got 12 gallons of water. So you can see that I don't care who's saying, oh, you're going to get all this water, we're going to drill here, we're going to get all these people to evaluate this. You're going to get the numbers you want to, to get what you want. I don't believe the numbers work. It's going to come up with the commissioners can say this and that. I'm sorry, not commissioners. I'm going to get you guys. But whoever's going to say that um, we're going to put, this could be okay. You have, you know, you have the, the, the number you need to build all these houses. You're going to have enough water. Well, I can tell you, you don't. You're not going to have it. We have just like Jeremy just spoke right now. We get about two gallons, something like that. Okay, I believe it. We have to have extra water. We have gallons of water, extra water, all the type of emergencies because you don't get enough water. And if we had, we only ended up at 12 gallons of water per minute. What is it? I think it's per minute. And there's three houses. That's not enough water. So I can't see how these houses on the top are going to get water. And I also agree with fire hazard. Those roads are very narrow, and you got potholes. And you can see people have problems because everything's so narrow. So I just want to thank you all for um, listening to us. And I ask the commissioners to vote against this because I, I really do think this is really a fire hazard and it's going to take our water away. For all of us that still have water, we're going to end up with less water. So I ask you, please vote against this. Thank you. Thanks, Good afternoon. My name is uh, Scott Gage, and uh, you'd be happy to know I'm going to drastically edit what I had to say because a lot of it is repetitive. Um, in the staff report, there's conclusion of law number five, which said the proposed development would not um, significantly impact health and safety of the residents. That conclusion was drawn without a response from Selkirk Fire, and they were asked, and without a response from the Bond County Sheriff's Department, and they weren't asked. So that's a faulty conclusion without all that information. Um, spent the last 31 years um, in public safety, the last 10 of it um, dealing um, with large scale evacuations of large communities um, with encroaching wildfires. And um, I can tell you, under best circumstances with the current residents there, an evacuation of the area in, in good conditions would be challenging. In bad conditions, it's going to be deadly. Um, drastically increasing the number of people in the area is going to make that even worse. Um, I had the opportunity to attend uh, a debriefing. Paradise, California was mentioned earlier. Um, a wildfire destroyed the town. Um, over 80 people were killed there. Um, and it just came back to the same thing. Uh, it was overdeveloped for the infrastructure that was in place. One way in, one way out, and that's what we have in the Bay. Um, so we're here today so we can do one of two things, plan and prepare for that, upgrade the infrastructure that can handle a mass evacuation out of the area, because it's not if a wildfire comes, a wildfire is gonna come. Or we can change the proposal and, and lessen it so that it can be accommodated. Thank you for uh, listening. My name is Jay Shelby, and I represent Garfield uh, Bay, uh, Garfield Villas um, Homeowners Association, of which I am a year-round resident. I reoppose the Monarch Point Vista development without significant and legally binding safeguards on the roads and the wells. Um, I will speak only to the road issue today, and uh, my neighbor Scott there handled the 
safety issues, and I'll go elsewhere. The public portion of Midas Drive directs only three quarters of a mile, extends from the Garfield Bay Road to um, a gate, mailboxes, and a turnaround. Long ago, the county designated it a public uh, road, but it has never maintained it. 25 years ago, it served fewer than a dozen and they're mostly seasonal homes. As I speak, Midas Drive provides access to seven housing developments. Of course, they're in various stages of development, including unaffiliated homes at its base and the latest entry, Monarch Vista Point. Those developments contain a total of 50 plus Platted home sites, nearly half with current residential structures, to which Midas Drive serves a route of ingress and egress for reaching and leaving the home sites and accessing it for fleets of service delivery and visitor vehicles. When the Bonner County Planning Commission considered its uh, provisional approval recommendations in January, it was told by a staff member that Midas was a treated gravel road. In fact, it has never been treated, and much of the road is down to the granite base. The upper end of the public road acts as a creek bed for the Grouse Mountain runoff. There are some two dozen homeowners currently using the road. That number will increase substantially with uh, Monarch Vista Point Homes, and Modest Drive will become a Class A public road, a road of high use. Financial and administrative responsibility for snow plowing, grading, and other maintenance issues historically has fallen to the Garfield Villa Homeowners Association. And as of three years ago, the adjacent Midas Mountain the states joined in sharing the expenses through a deeded um, requirement. These dozen property owners shoulder the sole responsibility of maintaining the road, and the cumulative cost of which has exceeded $100,000 uh, in the last 20 years. If the road is to be snow plowed to the county maintained Garfield Bay Road, or if a car uh, damaging pothole must be fixed, or culverts are needed to improve the di diversion of runoff water. The Garfield Villas uh, Souls and uh, MME currently bear the burden, say, for a few general souls living on the lower part of the road who occasionally volunteer a contribution. The main body of the road is demanding serious attention. When reaching the approval, approved development potential, traffic will triple. Soon it will not even be financially feasible for us. Therefore, in closing, I, we ask the commission, commissioners to either one, reconsider the county maintenance of Midas Drive because of the growing number of property tax homeowners forced to use it, or to a lieu of that, to require the condition of final approval for a Monarch Vista Point development, so the developer would bring Midas Road up to county standards and place within the deeds the sale of a legal requirement that the property owners share in these costs, for at least equitably and fairly. Thank you for your time and for your, any consideration. Thank you. Um, okay. Anyone else wish to speak? Zero over in the corner of that. I'm just here to watch. Okay. Uh, is anybody in line? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think we're going to do that. Let's go. Can you hear us, Alicia Miller? Hello. Here we go. Now we can hear you. Hi, there, can hear me? Hi. Good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, my name is Alicia Miller, and I'm the president of Water Corporation, uh, Midas Water Corporation, and a resident of Lower Midas Drive. Our water system is currently providing water to 17 homes within the Kramer Home sites and neighboring parcels with an existing obligation to provide water for an additional four undeveloped lots. It will not be long before these lots are also developed and need to access existing water usage rights. As it happens, Midas Water System owns a piece of property intended for the second well site, sitting between lot seven and eight of the proposed Marner Vista Point subdivision. Midas Water Corporation purchased this lot in 2009, knowing that the day would come when we need to draw additional water resources to service our members. The day has arrived where summer use is greater than capacity. We're expecting to need to use this additional water source within two to four years. SDG Properties did approach us, proposing a partnership of which we agreed to consider. However, we began to research the proposal 
and realize that water availability is becoming a very clear issue and needs to be addressed first. Midas Water feels strongly that a more extensive study of, of water availability is warranted. And if any adverse impact will be had on those already living in the area and already dependent on existing wells and water systems before approving more development. Existing residents with existing water usage rights must be considered. The density of this one development alone could have families, families further competing for what clearly is a very limited resource in our area. Midas Water has the unique position of concern that the development might cause issues for future use of our, our utility lot. With the size of this lot being so small, it's not able to use it for any other purpose and might render it virtually worthless for our members and our water system if such development is approved and installed. Um, we kindly ask the commissioners to consider this when they are making their determination today. It would be in our and the community's best interest to um, not approve this development until at least Midas Water Corporation and the other Garfield Bay residents are able to know what impact the density of this new development will have on existing residents' water rights and land use. As a private resident who lives on lower Midas Drive, I urge you to also consider that Midas Drive is an underdeveloped, privately maintained road. I and other residents of this road already have significant impact by the traffic and do incur costs, which have been discussed already. Um, currently, we see delivery trucks driving up to the top of the mountain. They cannot turn around and they literally uh, back all the way down the mountain. It is a safety issue and it definitely needs to be addressed. Thank you for your time. Who's next, Jim? Oh. Jim, can you hear us? Yes. Can you hear me? Uh, Jim, would you please identify yourself for the record, please? Yes. My name is Jim Gall. I have a home at 998 Minus Road. I want to support the comments made by a lot of the uh, residents concerning the well. I want to support the statement by the retired engineer that also stated the Steckman well was at 70 gallons a minute and is now at one to two. And in the summer months, August, September, it's not uncommon that we have no water. So we took on a large investment to provide our ability to purchase water, but it needs to be known that there's times when we have no water. I uh, also want to uh, support the road, that a road agreement is identified by the developer and worked with through our groups and others to make sure that there's going to be a joint uh, group that pays for the repairs and maintenance of the road. Also back in 2008, another developer named Mr. Greenwood came through on this development and I think was proposing 20 to 30 home sites. I don't know why the commissioners reduced it to nine, but that's what they did. And I think nine homes is, is a better application for this if it's gonna move forward. And I would also just say that I would like to see the water availability proven. And I think it was a great comment that they monitor the existing well to determine the final impact of what their wells might do. I want to thank you. I presented a letter to the commissioner to review with other, with other items and want to thank you for your time. And I hope that you might postpone this until more information is provided. Thank you. Thank you. Who's next? Nancy, Nancy can you hear us? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah. Good, great. Hi, thanks for talking with me, listening to me today, commissioners. I'm Dr. Nancy Gillum. I live near Garfield Bay um, and I sent a letter in and it's in record. So I wanna go on record that I'm opposed to the Monarch Vista Point subdivision. I don't feel it's in the best interest of the county or the bay or the health of the bay and particularly our groundwater and its residents. So specifically, I'm gonna to speak to that. No new wells should be permitted until an adequate groundwater study is complete in our rapidly growing area. We need this information to inform decision makers both at the local and the state level as to whether new wells can be allowed without adversely affecting existing homes. 
In the meantime, we need a moratorium on development until these studies are complete and stronger codes in place. Case in point, Bonner da Daily B, January 28th, Kokolala, we know what just happened there with a local disaster emergency where they ran out of water. I personally have worked in uh, the last 20 years helping rural communities look at the impacts of wildfire, drought, floods, and natural disasters. And we also look at hydrologic data. So what I'm gonna share with you for a minute is data from our state, state of Idaho hazard mitigation plan. It's the drought chapter. So I wanna quote some figures. I'm gonna add more bad news to the water concern. So groundwater in the state of Idaho provides 90% of our drinking water and it's now vulnerable to drought. And I wanna state this very slowly. The data shows that the supply of groundwater is depleting while demand is growing in North Idaho and throughout the state. There are graphs in that document that I sent you folks that show Bonner County and how the subsurface recharge is declining. Directly quoting from the Idaho Hazard Mitigation Plan, there have been in the last 14 years, 14 of the 18 last Eight, 14 out of the 18 years recently, we've got droughts showing 66 droughts through that time period. So the data says Idaho can expect a drought of varied severity to occur at a minimum every three years. So not only do we not have current hydrologic data in the basin, in the bay, quote, historic hydrologic patterns can no longer be solely relied upon to forecast our water. Since precipitation and runoff patterns are changing, there is increasing uncertainty for our water supply. Over the last hundred years, most of the state has warmed two degrees. And so the predictions in this report say that we're gonna see more wildfire and less water. I'm gonna read this one big sentence and then close. By 2050, Idaho is projected to see a 110% increase in drought. So the whole state is vulnerable and I believe it's your job as commissioner and planners to not just evaluate land use based on historic data and current data, but you need to consider what's coming down the pike in the future. So again, please, no new well should be permitted until we have adequate groundwater studies we need this information to inform our decisions at a state and local level so that other people's wells are not adversely affected. So in the meantime, please put a moratorium on permitting new developments like this one until the studies are complete, until we have stronger codes in place. Please take this seriously and protect this, de this declining vital resource. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs> Who else to speak online? Give it a minute. If you can hear me online, you're watching. If anybody else wish to speak, just raise your hand. There's a little button down at the bottom of the screen. Raise your hand. I don't see anybody jumping up. So with that, we will go ahead and close public comment um, and move to rebuttal. Um, does staff have anything they wish to rebut? Um, as far as the roads are concerned, I would like to say that. Hey, Swati, you got to identify yourself to the record. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> this is Swati from Bonnet County Planning Department. And as far as the roads are concerned, or the concerns about roads are uh, there, uh, Bonnet County Road and Bridge Department, they make recommendations based on the proposed density of homes. So when they make recommendations regarding improvement of roads or widening of roads, they do take into consideration the existing density on those roads and the proposed density included. That's all I have to say. Okay. Does the applicant wish to rebut anything that was said? That don't get Corby, the applicant, back up front. Um, just a couple of things, obviously, we kind of addressed a lot of that, I think, on the front end, a lot of similar concerns throughout. A um, couple of little things I just thought of throughout that process. Um, we are, and this is not really within the application, but um, our, we are doing a rainwater catch system throughout all the houses that are going to be there. Sam Bonner County gets 70 inches on average of rain a year. 
I guess there's potential that that's changing. Um, I don't know, but seven inches of rain a year with the water catches a lot of moves. That's an incredible amount of water. So we are planning on utilizing some things to help be um, a little bit environmentally forward. And then also a part of it is um, fire suppression plans and stuff like that. So the houses here will hopefully not be the burden that other houses that are older in the, in the area are in case of a fire, because there'll actually be fire suppression opportunities for the fire department within these ones, which will be, I think, within Bonner County, all new construction is kind of going that direction. Um, so those are just kind of a few things that came up. And then as far as road condition on Midas Drive, um, we're going to be ripping it, like tearing into it to put in a three, four hundred thousand dollar sewer line coming in there and then redoing the entire road afterwards and then proposing to split the hundred thousand you spent over 10 or 20 years. If I was in your guys' shoes, I'd be pretty excited about not spreading that between a couple of homes, but spreading it between 30 homes seems like a positive um, for the residents in the area. Um, outside of that, I think we've kind of covered everything else. Um, and the last thing is with water. At the end of the day, we have to comply with what Panhandle Health mandates. Once we drill a well, we're not going to drill a well until we have approval to move forward. But we can't build 18 homes on these parcels unless there is adequate water supply. And so that will come down the pipe. Thanks, guys. Okay, thank you. You have a question? Yeah, I've got a question on the um, HOA or the, you know, the road agreement, how that's, how that looks. I mean, there's nothing, I know you said, well, we'll work together the best we can with the people that are there. Yeah. Um, how does that look? How do you structure that to make it to where it's fair and equitable with the people that are already there and, and that's sure that it gets done in that way? Yeah, it's a great question. And in all honesty, it's going to take the collaboration of outside. We can only control Monarch Vista Point. And so we would have a road maintenance agreement for the portion of Midas Drive that we are impacting. We can't control what the village does above us or what everybody to the north of us does. We would invite them to be a part of it because it would be a benefit to them, uh, but we can't control. Uh, we're proposing doing a monthly fee that's going in that way when road maintenance has to happen. It's not knocking on doors and trying to convince people that it's an adequate bid for the job. Instead, there's funds available so the work can be made uh, continuously done and cared for. But the hope is, and we've already invited in the villas and um, the hope is that people to the north on Midas Drive will see the benefit and want to enter into that, but we can't force that. Does that answer the question? Yep. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Now, my question is, uh, I know there's ways to get the road done, but most of the subdivisions we look at, there's a requirement for alternative exit, and I haven't seen that. Well... I mean, you guys, that's a very challenging. I mean, that's going all the way to Sagal Road. That's way beyond what we're doing here, right? There's one road out through Sagal. So, I mean, we're splitting up between two different roads, the development. Um, and actually, so it's your question right there. You brought up with mudsides. We're not connecting Midas Drive and West Garfield Road. So they're separate. The development's not going to have a connecting road between those. So we'll have access directly off West Garfield and then access directly off Midas. Um, obviously, parcels will touch both roads. Um, but yeah, as far as there's not really the ability to loop something in there, to my understanding. Okay, gentlemen, any other questions? No. Okay, so thank you, commissioners. Yes. So if you look at the map, the, the green line is county maintained road, and then the, this orange line is county owned. So this is minus track. Mm -hmm. So let me, let me just show you a couple of the, the codes and the review that the planning department used. So first off, this is in the recreation zone, and this is the density and dimension of standards. And where there is urban sewer, when it's in a sewer district, the minimum lot size is 20,000 square feet. And so that, that's just sewer, that's not sewer and water. If there was sewer and water, it would be 12,000 square feet. And then one of the things you have to look at, commissioners, is the, is the code says that if you're going to provide a water supply on an individual well on each lot, they have to, they have to provide this study. Or if you're going to do a water system and provide uh, a system that provides two to nine lots, you have to have a more intense study, a professional geologist or professional engineer. And you'll notice in the file, that's what you have is you have a, a copy of a, 
a study done by a professional geologist uh, giving their opinion, their professional opinion, if you will, on the, the waters in that area. Um, and then going back to the code, as, as this moves forward, this is a preliminary plan, and as this moves forward, the applicant will be required to put together an uh, engineered cost estimate of all public improvements. So the water system, the sewer system, the roads, and, and so the roads here, all, all proposed lots less than five acres have to have direct frontage on and access to a public right of way, which these will have. Then they have to be developed with the road constructed uh, to the standards of Title II. Title II is your county road standards. Uh, those are the ones that Road and Bridge maintain for public roads. So they will have to build this road to county standards in order to meet these requirements. And they will work with Road and Bridge. That will also be part of the, uh, the improvement cost, engineer cost estimate that they will do in order to move forward to a final plan. So in order to get final plan approval, all these improvements either A, have to be in place, or they have to apply for uh, a surety bond or turn in a surety bond and have it signed with the board as part of that final plan approval. So, so these questions will, will continue to be answered going forward. The improvements will be in place uh, at final plat or, or a bond will be in place to ensure that they're put in. Now, the, the question you need to ask yourself, commissioners, is, is do you have enough information to answer these questions? If you would like more information, we can continue and gather more information. We can uh, deny the application and we can move forward uh, knowing what these conditions are. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Is there anyone close public comment? But you guys have any questions or not? No, I think he, he pretty well covered it there. Okay. So we'll go ahead and go into deliberation. I want to try to hit some of the some of the statements or questions um, made by the public. Um, I think there might be some confusion. This is a preliminary plat process. Um, so what by approving this, it gives the developer the opportunity to then go out and prove that he can get water and demonstrate. Via a couple of different mechanisms, one be to bond, um, maturity bond, to make these things happen. I, I know some of the concerns are about water. If they can't get water, if they if we approve this and they go out and find that they can't get water or can't get adequate water, then the subdivision is dead. They can't have a house enough water. We don't permit wells. The county doesn't. Um, that's a Department of Water Resources. I think Mental Health doesn't handle it. Um, but we don't uh, we don't get involved in that. Um, but we do say that you have to be able to demonstrate it with subdivision, um, that you've got to be able to demonstrate you can provide water to the homes. Um, public road versus privately maintained or versus, versus county maintained roads. So we've got a number of, of uh, public roads that are privately maintained in the county. Typically, that was from the original developer deciding that he didn't want to bring it to county road standards. We do have a vehicle to bring a road into um, county uh, maintained road, um, but you've got to meet. Um, the county um, road construction requirements. Um, the, the residents have to bring it up to that before we consider accepting it. Um, this is yet another one of those roads where it was substandard, but it looks like it's a very solid provision here requirement and one of the uh, one of the conditions of approval that they do upgrade the road, which I think will benefit everyone living on that road. And I again I, I highly recommend a road maintenance agreement. You guys get that worked out. Um, let's see. There's no development plan as yet has been submitted. That's again the next phase. It's preliminary um, zoning on this. This is a rec zone. This was zoned back in the 2005-2008 era, um, as were all the ordinances written to this. Um, one of the things that we always run into as commissioners is we don't get to change the law or make up the law as we go. Um, we have to stick with the law that as it was written until it's changed and we are working on a comp plan change. But this area was um, looked at back in that time for higher development, for smaller parcels, if you can get sewer water, sewer water, as Milton said, you can go down to 12,000 square foot. Uh, the smallest parcels here are 22,000 square foot. So they're well above that size. Some of it could be because of, of uh, geography, but either way, it's it's a very generous application as far as the, the land goes. 
Um, it's not uh, what we see over in Whiskey Jack or some of these other areas that, that are definitely getting down to those, those lot size minimums. Um, let me make sure there's not something else. Uh, living in a rural area. So Mr. Brassell lives in a rural, a rural area. I live in a rural area. And when you choose to live in a rural area, you choose to accept the responsibility for living in the rural area. Um, I'm on all timberland. Our property, we manage timber. Manage timber. Um, we are always at fire risk. It doesn't stop us from, from owning the land or living on the land, nor does it stop any of our neighbors from living around our land. Um, but it's one of those things that what's included in that is, I know if I call 911, it may take a little bit of time for folks to get out there. To, well, I may not see EMS for a while, may not see the sheriff at all, you never know. Um, <laughs> but, um, but those things happen, and that's, and that's something we choose when we decide to live out in rural areas. If you, if you want quicker service, you really need to live in, a, in, a, uh, in an urban area like a city or close to a city. Um, I do know that the uh, Idaho State Patrol goes out there because I spend a little bit of time out at Carfield Bay. One of our attorneys, actually attorney that advises us, um, lives right out there. Uh, he's one of your neighbors. Um, so I've been to his place several times, especially on big weekends. We say Idaho State Patrol there, and we see the sheriff up there as well. Um, what else? Here? Stormwater management plan, we're talking about disturbing the ground. Um, that's part of this process. They've got it before they start doing any kind of construction, tearing up the road. Um, they still have to go through the final class stage and come up with a development plan. They will have to um, provide a stormwater management plan and deal with any kind of silt. Um, Christian gave even talked about that when they, when they saw the requirement for it, so they were good with it. Um, Sucker fires response, no response. So at this phase, one of the reasons you won't see responses from groups like Selkirk Fire is because there's nothing to respond to. We're talking about the land being the land. It's drawing some lines on a paper. That's it. Now, when they come with a development plan, that's when you'll see Selkirk Fire weigh in and say, hey, okay, based on this development plan, we either have concerns or we don't have concerns. Um, they're an independent taxi district away from the county. So they decide where their firehouses go, and that's up to their board. Um, it's not up to us. Let me make sure I get any other things here. That I think we pretty much covered it. Pretty much left us without. Well, I'm just about. trying to go through. So I'm taking notes. When people when people talk, I take notes because I want to know what I you guys know. have to say. And, um, three minute rule. That's a rule that we use on everyone. Sorry, um, sorry, Laura. You know, that's, that's the way it is. We do get your written statements, so and and we do read them. Um, development. Over development again. Over development kind of plays into the whole zoning thing. This land was looked at originally as a higher density zoning. Um, we have several areas around the county that have this this rec designation. A couple of them are by me. Um, you'll see them here and there. Um, so that so the uh, the development is is baked into the cake from the 2005 2008. Um, additionally, when and I think it was already covered by Swati that when agencies look at um, this development, they're not looking just at this development. They're looking at this development compared to what's already existing, they're not looking at what's coming in the future yet because they haven't come yet. So they're only dealing with, or they're dealing with not just this development, but everything else around it and look at a total impact. And, and I know that for a fact, is, I know that's, that's, how they, that's how they do it. Um, well, I can't think of anything else I have covered here. <laughs> we have um, nothing but, for the rest but of to me, based on the, well, to me, based on the, my, so my conclusions are, um, Looking at the conditions for approval, they're fairly extensive for this. And again, knowing this is a preliminary preliminary plat and not a final plat, there's no development plan yet. Um, and looking at the findings of fact and conclusions of the law, knowing that it is a it is zone rec and zone for higher density, um, I have no issue with moving on with this portion of the preliminary plat um, because again, we don't know what the development plan is going to look like. We don't know if they're going to have water. Any of these factors, sewer water, if they can't get it. The subdivision stops and the land remains there, or they have to reduce the size and scope, um, which they'd have to come back to the process again for that. So uh, that's where I'm at. Okay. Better take a deep breath. Um, so, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I have one of those mints, it's got a lot of sugar in it. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I'm, I'm going to just repeat some of the things that Dan said. One of the things we are here to do is look at the zoning and does this. Does this match what the comp plan and the zoning map says? And it, and it does. Is it is the comp plan 100% and then the zoning map 100%? We've seen that it isn't always, but uh, it uh, it obviously 
you know, there's wreck zone around all water. It's kind of like, okay, if it's got water, it's wreck. Um, these things, like I say, this project could be uh, by our own code, more densely zoned or more densely developed than what's proposed. So um, as long as the very long list of conditions are met and we make sure that we address the things that are the biggest concern for the citizens around there, which is water um, and roads and evacuation. I, I think I'll, I'll elaborate a little bit on Dan. I've said it more than once. Um, you know, we don't have the response that a lot of um, less rural areas have in Barn County because of the sheer size of it. Um, I live in town in Priest River, but it doesn't make me any less aware that when you move into a rural area like this area, you're taking some of that risk and responsibility onto yourself. It's welcome to North Idaho. Hopefully you can take care of yourself. We'll get there as soon as we can and we'll do the best we can to help you out. But we aren't going to be able to um, respond to everything in, in such timely fashion. So as part of living in the rural lifestyle, further away from town we move, the further the longer it takes to get there. Yep. Either direction. That's just part of it. Uh, yeah, this is just preliminary. So he's gonna to have to meet all those things to go forward. So this is just saying, yeah, it's zone wreck, and these are the requirements and hurdles you're gonna to have to jump to get there. And if you don't clear the hurdles, you don't clear the hurdles. So it stops. Uh, if you do clear the hurdles, everything works then somebody's gonna have a spectacular view up there and it probably will come with a spectacular price. But there's a there's a whole lot of hurdles to jump to get to that final close the door. Okay, is that it? I'll entertain a motion from one of you. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve file S0004-21 Requesting platting of uh, approximately 14.75 acres of unplatted land zoned recreational into 18 residential lots and two utility lots located in section 21, Township 56 North, Wing 1 West, Boise Meridian, Bonner County, Idaho, finding that it is in accord with the general and specific objectives of the Bonner County Comprehensive Plan and the Bonner County Revised Code as enumerated in the following conclusions of law and based upon the evidence submitted up to the time the staff reported or the staff report was prepared and testimony received at this hearing, I further move to adopt the finding of facts and conclusions of law as set forth in the staff report and direct the planning staff to draft written findings and conclusions to reflect this motion, have the chairman sign and transmit to all interested parties this action does not result in the taking of private property. The action that should be taken to obtain the preliminary plat is to meet the conditions of the approval as adopted. I would second that. Okay, we have a motion to second. Roll we'll call vote. Aye. 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 Ma'am. Okay, and it's 322, and we will go ahead and motion passes. 322, and we'll go.